His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali in September announced that his government will be providing each household with a $25,000 COVID-19 relief cash grant. Since that announcement, communities in Regions 1 and 9 have received their grants, while distribution is ongoing in Regions 7 and 8, with other regions set to receive theirs shortly. Minister of Amerindian Affairs Honorable Pauline Sukai recently visited Region 8 communities as part of a team to distribute the grants and spread awareness on the deadly COVID-19 disease. The minister held discussions with residents of Maikobi and Kurukubaru. We are asking the village council and the villagers to adhere to the COVID protocols and guidelines to keep your people safe. COVID is real and it kills. I would really like everyone to mask up. That is the only way we can be able to reduce the spread of or the transmission of COVID-19. If we don't mask up, we put ourselves our family, and the village at large at risk. So we're asking everyone to mask up. We're asking everyone to social distance. COVID-19 do not discriminate. Every single person could be infected if we don't take the precaution seriously, if we do not adhere to the advice to the guidance so that we can protect ourselves. I'm here to ensure that the payment team has embarked successfully on their work and that they are proceeding to provide the help, the assistance in cash. The minister assured the residents that the administration will continue to support the development of Amerindian communities. The Tractors will be used in the communities for agricultural projects since they can transport produce and logs as well as plow the soil for farming. Minister Sukai also promised to support the villages by providing agricultural tools before Christmas. Residents were informed that there will be an increase in the presidential grants to assist the villages with their developmental plans, while the Community Support Officers CSO program will soon be reintroduced to help youths in the communities. Residents of the communities thank the government for the COVID-19 support to households. Like, um, thankful for this money for better help in the home. When my parents them who is sick with COVID-19, mother sick four years now, and it's three years now since my father sick. But he blind and he can't help himself, and now he get the virus. And he's in hospital. I feel good about it. And the cash that we've given, it will help out a lot in the family. You know, to buy something very important. So, I mean, for me, you buy something that you can see that the government gave you. Well, I try to help some myself with this money that yeah, I received just now. I will get to help my family with this money that I, I get. Well, I feel happy. And I want to thank the president and the minister, whoever, 
for making this come true and thank you very much. I'm gonna buy whatever we really need in the home for my family. I feel well, good. Uh, plus I wanna thank the president for the grin and that's it. For us food, you know, for the house and whatever we'll find, you know, uh, tablets for the, the, the COVID, the, the, the corona, whatsoever. Seeking to the force. Some residents also took the opportunity to raise their concerns with the Amerindian Affairs Minister. Some of us here are without ID cards, and our children, grandchildren are without birth certificates. Okay, that's. We have, been, we have been suffering with this for that long now. One resident also raised the issue of education delivery to children of Amerindian communities. The minister, while acknowledging the challenges, noted that there should be a community effort to assist the children. They are mostly hinterland villages that do not have internet and where their internet is not working too well that we have budgeted for worksheets to be printed and to be sent to every single school across the hinterland and the riverine communities. And the purpose for that, the teachers should know this, is for them, the parents and young people in the village, including the village council, to organize study groups under the tree, on the benaps, in the schools, wherever you can gather small groups of children where they will not, they will have space for social distancing and they can wear a mask and they can be guided along in completing the work, the worksheets. So it's not for parents alone to grapple with the worksheet and their children because many parents have not even completed primary school and so some of them can't help their children enough. During her visit to Campbelltown, residents complained to Minister Sukai that the current Tushau made a unilateral decision stopping them from mining and allowing only large-scale miners to operate. The minister then met with the representatives of the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC, to discuss the matter. Mining in an Amerindian community, the approval comes from who? Yes. It comes from the village council. No. It comes from the people. Yes. It comes from the people. The people then when they agree to my name, puts that agreement in the hands of their representatives who are the village council. The village council then sits with those who want to mine and makes the agreement. Their task is making the agreement and signing on to the agreement on behalf of the people. That's how it works. With facilitated by GGMC officers. Minister Sukai committed to meeting with the Minister of Natural Resources to address the issue, while the village council and the people seek a speedy resolution in the best interest of the villagers. Not put on hold forever. Mm -hmm. It is for them, the people and their leaders to sit and resolve it. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Resolve this matter in the best interest of the people. And when the people invite GGMC to the meeting that will discuss application for external miners or dredge owners, you guys will have to facilitate it according to the law. There's a bit of shout, and it will always have, what you call it, issues. But it has to be done right. The people cannot be denied hustling because our government has opened up mining as an essential sector so that our people can survive. But it must be done within regulations and correctly. So your part is regulation, but my part is in the interest of the people. The Aboriginal villagers living there should not be denied 
to hustle for their living. The minister pointed out that when villagers are not allowed to earn, it affects businesses in the area, especially if big miners decide to spend their money elsewhere. We cannot allow our economy to be stranglehold. We have to get the ordinary poor people back to normalcy, and that is what our government will support. We will support where the poor, the ordinary villager get a chance to make a living. And you would know that right now our government understand the difficulty that the COVID pandemic has actually brought on its people. And that is why you see we are also out in the fields paying out a small cash grant of $25,000 to alleviate the pressure people, the poor man is under. And for that $25,000 to be the only thing they have in their pocket for this weekend is not enough. They have to go back to us. The villagers of Campbelltown will get themselves organized and invite the Tushau to a meeting with the village council to have the issue resolved or have the Tushau removed in the interest of the village. The Amerindian Affairs Minister noted that the government has been providing resources over the last two months to ensure hinterland residents do not have to visit neighboring villages and countries amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Upon taking office in August, the administration immediately distributed food hampers to the families in Kurokubaru and surrounding villages such as Kanapang, Itabak and Parmakatoy.